Pluto's dark side has come into a dim view thanks to the glow of its moon. If you don't know what we're talking about, then stay tuned to find out. Pluto, which is remembered for more than eight decades as just a pale, fuzzy, and faraway point of light, is shaping up to be one of the most complicated and diverse planets in the solar system. Pluto's cold surface varies from place to place, featuring provinces affected by different types of ices, like methane in one area, nitrogen in another, and water in another place. This has been recently revealed in the newly analyzed pictures and measurements from NASA's James Webb Telescope. This is just one of the recent Pluto findings, which are presented in a set of five New Horizons papers published online in the journal Science. Taken together, the five studies paint the Pluto system in sharp circumstance, shedding new light on the dwarf planet's texture, geology, and development over the past 4.6 billion years. New Horizons was the first search to explore Pluto in mid-2015. Pluto was found in 1930 by American astronomer Clyde Tombaugh. The dwarf planet stayed mysterious for many years because it lies so far from Earth. Pluto orbits in the Kuiper Belt, the icy realm beyond Neptune, at an average distance from the Sun of almost 40 astronomical units. That's so isolated that even the best picture by NASA's popular Hubble Space Telescope depicts the dwarf planet as a sheer haze of pixels. But things started changing in a huge way on July 14, 2015. On this day, New Horizons conducted the first ever flyby of Pluto, coming within just 7,800 miles of its surface. The spacecraft saw towering water ice mountains, flowing nitrogen ice glaciers, pebbly snakeskin landscape, a vast crater-free plain known as Sputnik Planum, and many other details that scientists are still beginning to figure out. One of the new reports dives deeply into the geology of these features, which reveals new ideas about their possible inception and evolution. The 620-mile-wide, nitrogen-ice-dominated Sputnik Planum, for instance, clearly sits at the top of a huge and ancient impact basin. Sputnik Planum is steady and pristine, surviving no impact scars. This also shows that the area was resurfaced recently, almost 10 million years ago, and possibly much more recently than that. But other portions of Pluto hide tons of visible craters, and some regions also have a fair number, suggesting that the dwarf planet has been geologically active on a huge scale over its whole history. This result came as a big surprise when it was first declared last year. Earth remains geologically active because it has a heated molten core. Some icy satellites, such as Saturn's moon Enceladus and the Jovian moon Europa, also hide significant internal heat, which is generated by the strong gravitational pull of their large parent planets. However, something else is possibly happening at Pluto. According to Stern, we have to rethink our whole understanding of geophysics. Stern isn't convinced what exactly is going on, but he has a favorite hypothesis, which means that a subsurface Pluto ocean has been slowly freezing over the eons. Stern also said, as it freezes, it releases latent heat. It may be the freezing of this ocean that's powering all this geology. The maps of water ice on Pluto's surface were built using measurements created by NASA's New Horizons spacecraft during its July 2015 flyby of the dwarf planet. The new geology paper also defines a number of other Pluto features, such as the large, dark red Cthulhu region, which seems to owe its color to large concentrations of tholins, complex organic molecules that drifted down out of the dwarf planet's atmosphere and the towering peaks Wright Mons and Picard Mons. Wright Mons is possibly 2.5 miles high and 90 miles wide. Picard Mons is even larger, rising almost 3.7 miles into the Pluto sky and measuring 140 miles across. Both of these peaks may have been created from cryovolcanic activity. New Horizons also caught long tectonic faults with extremely straight associated scarps, which are factors that suggest Pluto has a thick crust composed of water ice. One of the other new science papers maps out the fraction of various ices across Pluto's ground. This material, especially frozen methane, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and water, is fixed in a curiously unique way. Some Pluto provinces are also overlooked by nitrogen ice, others by methane, and so on. This pattern means that volatile material is being pushed around by sublimation, condensation, and glacial flows on both seasonal and geological timescales. One of the new reveals also focuses on Pluto's wispy atmosphere. For instance, New Horizons discovered that Pluto's upper atmosphere, which is more than 120 miles above the surface, is a lot much colder than what pre-flyby modeling work had predicted. In addition, the planet is also losing its atmosphere at a much lower rate than scientists had guessed. Modeling surveys had indicated that Pluto would be outgassing at cometary rates, losing lots of gas molecules to space every second. But New Horizons measurements revealed a sheer leak rather than a gush. 
The model estimates were off by a factor of about 5,000. Dwarf planet Pluto also has one giant moon, Charon, but now it is known to have four more tiny satellites. Pluto does not roam through space by itself. It has five moons, Charon, Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Styx. The last four are small, estimating around a few dozen miles wide at most, but Charon is 750 miles across, more than half as wide as Pluto itself. New Horizons reviewed these five satellites during its July 2015 flyby, and the new reports provide some insight into their inception and evolution as well. What's your take on this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. With that being said, it's time to end our today's video. Press the like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting stuff. Peace out.